please remember to fill out your evaluation form and leave it at the collection bin in the back of the room. Yeah, that's a big help for people to figure out just how bad our talk was. Yes, we do have a limited supply of CDs. It's great to be here. I'm going to be talking to you today about HTML5. Nothing brings joy to my heart more than robotic androids dancing and singing. Five, four, three. Good morning. This is Google I.O. I am thrilled to be here. At the Shoreline Amphitheater. This is the coolest thing. Excited about the future and what's coming. You can build with the community. We want to give you the tools to create entirely new technological capabilities. This is the tattoo. Good, right? And there's always endless discoveries. It's great to have a platform. You can get to new outcomes. Things previously thought to be impossible. Finally, I'm here. May in fact be possible. I hope you all find some inspiration to keep building for everyone. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back at I.O. We are coming to you live from our campus here in Mountain View. Of course, it's not quite the same without our developer community sitting here in person. It's another reminder of the times we are living in. The pandemic has brought us together in a shared experience for more than a year. But now we are seeing that common experience diverge. In some places, pe people are beginning to live their lives again as cases decline. Other places like Brazil and my home country of India are going through their most difficult moments yet. We are thinking of you and hoping for better days ahead. COVID-19 has deeply affected every community. It's also inspired coordination between public and private sectors and across international borders. At Google, we launched products and initiatives to help one another through this time, to help students and teachers continue their learning from anywhere, to help small businesses adapt and grow, and to get emergency relief and vaccines to communities in need. We work closely with many nonprofit organizations around the globe, and you can go to the link behind me to support their excellent work. At Google, the most fundamental way we help is by providing access to high quality information. Authoritative information from 170 public health organizations around the world, including the CDC, the FDA, and the WHO. We're also focused on helping people find accurate information about vaccines, including the hours and locations for vaccine sites in many countries on Google Maps and Search. COVID related information has been viewed hundreds of billions of times across our products and platforms. It continues to help people make decisions and keep their families safe. IO has always been a celebration of technology and its ability to improve lives. And I remain optimistic that technology can help us address the challenges we face together. So in that spirit, let's get started. At Google, the past year has given renewed purpose to our mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. We continue to approach that mission with a singular goal, building a more helpful Google for everyone. That means being helpful in moments that matter. And it means giving you the tools to increase your knowledge, success, health, and happiness. Sometimes it's about helping in little moments that add up to big changes. Recently, we added 150,000 kilometers of bike lanes in Google Maps. We are also introducing two new features. First, new eco-friendly routes. Using our understanding of road and traffic conditions, Google Maps will soon give you the, give you the option to take the most fuel efficient route. At scale, this has potential to significantly reduce car emissions and fuel consumption. Second, safer routing. Powered by AI, 
maps can identify road, weather, and traffic conditions where you're likely to have to suddenly break. We aim to reduce up to 100 million of these events every year. Sometimes it's about helping in the big moments, like helping 150 million students and educators keep learning over the last year with Google Classroom, or keeping students connected with affordable laptops. Chromebooks are now the number one device globally in K-12 education. In Japan, 40% of local governments chose to deploy Chromebooks to every child in grades one through nine. And here in California, we worked with the Department of Education to provide thousands of Chromebooks to students in need. One of the biggest ways we can build a more helpful Google for everyone is by reimagining the future of work. We have seen work transform in unprecedented ways, and it is no longer just a place. Over the last year, offices and coworkers have been replaced by kitchen countertops and pets. With so many people now working from home, access to collaboration tools has never been more critical. In 2006, we introduced Docs and Sheets to help people to collaborate in real time. A year later, we added Google Slides. All of this is now part of Google Workspace, which builds on more than 15 years of creating ways to work together. Today, we are announcing a new experience in Google Workspace to enable richer collaboration. We call this Smart Canvas. And to tell you more, here is Javier. Thanks, Sundar. And good morning, everybody. With Smart Canvas, we're bringing together the content and connections that transform collaboration into a richer, better experience. For over a decade, we've been pushing documents away from being just digital pieces of paper and toward collaborative linked content inspired by the web. Smart Canvas is our next big step. Let's see how a distributed team uses Smart Canvas to plan an important marketing campaign. The launch date is just two months away, so Wadu starts a document and quickly adds a brainstorm table. With app mentions, he pulls in the right people and generates a checklist to assign action items. These simple actions connect the team's plan to people, dates, and tasks, making their collaboration richer and more effective as they drive toward their launch. Now that he's shared the document, everyone starts dropping in their ideas. As they continue to brainstorm, the assisted writing feature suggests that they change the word chairman to chairperson in the document to avoid a gendered term. New assisted writing capabilities in Google Workspace offer suggestions so you can communicate more effectively. Not only are we helping with language suggestions, we're also making it easy to bring the voices and faces of your team directly into the collaboration experience to help them share ideas and solve problems together. Up to now, Adu and his team have been collaborating in the dock and scheduling separate Google Meet calls to review their progress. But starting today, you can easily present the dock, sheet, or slide you're working on directly into a Google Meet call. Now Adu can join his colleagues with just one click. And this fall, we're excited to bring Meet directly into Docs, Sheets, and Slides for the first time. This will enable teams like Adu's to actually see and hear each other while they're collaborating. Now, they'll never skip a beat. And to keep that collaboration flowing in the meeting, the team used the new responsive voting table to see which ideas for the campaign are the most popular ones. With all the progress they've made together, Adu's initial document has evolved into a highly interactive, always up-to-date, actionable plan. And the team stayed connected every step of the way. That's the power of Smart Canvas. Two months later, it's time to launch the new campaign. Adu and his team are joining from offices, 
from home and everywhere in between, connecting across time zones and continents. To help both office and remote teammates remain an equal part of the conversation, no matter where they are, we're launching Companion Mode in Google Meet. Companion Mode gives each of Adu's teammates in the office their own video tile so they can stay connected to their remote colleagues and everyone can participate in polls, chat, and Q&A in real time. Companion Mode is coming to Google Meet later this year. Teammates can also be heard wherever they work with noise cancellation powered by the best of Google's AI and machine learning in Google Meet to automatically adjust camera zoom and lighting, ensuring that everyone can be seen across all environments. We've also made it easier to customize views and share content so teams can focus on what matters most in the moment. This means that when Adu presents to the rest of his team, he can easily arrange people's faces to gauge their reactions while staying focused on his content. And his colleagues across the globe can follow along with live captions, even translations, into their native languages. When Adu finishes his presentation, he doesn't feel separated by time zones or languages or the devices his team is using. Instead, with Google Meet's immersive experience, he feels connected and in the moment. With Smart Canvas and these powerful enhancements to Google Meet, we're transforming collaboration in Google Workspace to help people succeed at work, at home, and in the classroom. Previously, the fully integrated experience in Google Workspace was available only to our customers, but it will soon be available to everyone, from college students to small businesses to friends and neighbors wanting to stay connected and get more done together. Stay tuned for more details in the coming weeks. And now, I'll hand it back to Sundar. Thanks, Javier. Those were exciting examples of how computer science and AI can make us more helpful across our products. Google Search was built on the insight that understanding links between web pages leads to dramatically better search results. We've made remarkable advances over the past 22 years, and search helps billions of people. And to improve search even further, we need to deepen our understanding of language and context. To do this requires advances in the most challenging areas of AI. And I want to talk about a few today, starting with translation. We learn and understand knowledge best in our native languages. So 15 years ago, we set out to translate the web, an incredibly ambitious goal at the time. Today, hundreds of millions of people use Google Translate each month across more than 100 languages. Last month alone, we translated more than 20 billion web pages in Chrome. With Google Assistant's interpreter mode, you can have a conversation with someone speaking a foreign language. And usage is up four times from just a year ago. While there is still work to do, we are getting closer to having a universal translator in your pocket. At the same time, advances in machine learning have led to tremendous breakthroughs in image recognition. In 2014, we first trained a production system to automatically label images a step change in computers' understanding of visual information. And it allowed us to imagine and launch Google Photos. Today, we can surface and share a memory, reminding you of some of the best moments in your life. Last month alone, more than two billion memories were viewed. Image recognition also means you can use Google Lens to take a photo of a math problem. Wish I had this when I was in school. <laughs> Lens is used more than three billion times each month. We can now be as helpful with images as we are with text. Machine learning has also improved how computers comprehend and communicate with human voices. As Javier shared, that's why we can caption conversations in Google Meet. 
and why live caption on Android can automatically caption anything running on your smartphone locally. It generates 250,000 hours of captioning every day. Bre breakthrough technology from DeepMind called WaveNet increased the quality of computer-generated speech, leading to more natural and fluid interactions. WaveNet allowed us to create and deploy 51 voices across Google Assistant. Together, the advances in AI I just spoke about across translation, images, and voice improved the search experience for billions of people. They also enabled us to make a huge leap forward in how computers process natural language. In 2017, we first introduced the world to transformers, a novel machine learning approach for better natural language understanding. Transformers became the foundation for many other breakthroughs, like AlphaFold and BERT, which we introduced in 2019. BERT considers the full context of a word by looking at the words that come before and after, leading to one of our most significant quality improvements across Google Search and enabling us to respond to queries with more helpful answers. In this case, realizing that the question was about parking on a hill without a curb. We have revolutionized the ability of computers to understand natural language. Yet, despite the incredible power of computers, there are still moments like this. Sorry, I don't understand. This is because language is endlessly complex. We use it to tell stories, crack jokes, and share ideas. We continuously pull from concepts we've learned over the course of our lives. The richness and flexibility of language make it one of humanity's greatest tools and one of computer science's greatest challenges. If someone asks me if the temperature in the room is OK, and I say I'm freezing, they know that I'm very cold, not literally freezing. Or if someone says, what's the weather like today? I don't respond. It's 70 degrees, sunny, and a 12% chance of rain. I'd probably say, it's starting to feel like summer. I might eat lunch outside. Sensible, sensible responses keep conversations going and allow them to end up in a completely different place from where they started. Even if I began by talking about the weather, we may end up talking about football. Today, I'm excited to share our latest breakthrough in natural language understanding, Lambda. It's a language model for dialogue applications. And it's open domain, which means it's designed to converse on any topic. And while it's still in research and development, we've been using it internally to explore novel interactions. For example, Say you wanted to learn about one of my favorite pl planets, Pluto. Lambda already understands quite a lot about Pluto and millions of other topics. Let's listen to a conversation the team had with Pluto a few days ago. I'm so curious about you. I sense your excitement. Ask me anything. Tell me what I would see if I visited. You would get to see a massive canyon some frozen icebergs, geysers, and some craters. It sounds beautiful. I assure you it is worth the trip. However, you need to bring your coat, because it gets really cold. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, I was wondering, have you ever had any visitors? Yes, I have had some. The most notable was New Horizons, the spacecraft that visited me. That must have been exciting. The team that created New Horizons was very excited to see me. I also sent them back a picture of myself since I had not been seen up close before. That's so great. What else do you wish people knew about you? I wish people knew that I am not just a random ice ball. I am actually a beautiful planet. Well, I think you're beautiful. I am glad to hear that. I don't get the recognition I deserve. Sometimes people refer to me as just a dwarf planet. Don't let it bother you. You're amazing. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. Thanks for talking with me. Anytime. I am always open for people to chat. I hope you have a great day. Uh, 
I spent some time with my son conversing with Pluto, and it's magical. We had a lot of fun learning about space together. Let's break down what made it feel so natural. First, learn concepts. As you saw, the model talked about the New Horizon spacecraft and the coldness of space. Lambda synthesized these concepts from its training data. These concepts were not hand-programmed in the model. Because none of the responses were predefined, Lambda answered with sensible responses, keeping the dialogue open-ended. Natural conversations are generative, and they never take the same path twice. And Lambda is able to carry a conversation no matter what we talk about. You can have another conversation without retraining the model. Let's see what happened when we talked to a paper airplane. What's it like being thrown through the air? It's quite the experience, actually. The wind blowing against you and the trees flying past are quite the sight. You never know where you'll land either. What's the worst place you've ever landed? That would have to be in a puddle. I was just barely still intact, so I was stuck there for a few minutes. It was quite annoying. Oh, that sounds awful. Were you able to fly again? Thankfully, I was. I had a few minor injuries to my wing, but you can't really tell unless you know what to look for. What's the secret to a really good paper airplane? Well, my good friend, I must first ask you to specify what you mean by good. Some may think it's how far it goes, some may think it's how straight it goes, and some may think it's how flat it lands. So what do you think? I care the most about distance. Then I would have to say a nice wide wing span is what you'll want. Also, the paper needs to be really firm. What's the farthest you've ever flown? I've flown over about 1,500 feet. The wind was perfect that day. Wow, that's really far. That must have been quite a throw. It's really impressive to see how Lambda can carry on a conversation about any topic. It's amazing how sensible and interesting the conversation is. Yet, it's still early research, so it doesn't get everything right. Sometimes, it can give nonsensical responses. Imagining Pluto doing flips, or playing fetch with its favorite ball, the moon. Other times, it just doesn't keep the conversation go going. At Google, we have been researching and developing language models for many years. We have focused on ensuring Lambda meets our incredibly high standards on fairness, accuracy, safety, and privacy. So from concept all the way to design, we are making sure it's developed consistent with our AI principles. We believe Lambda's natural conversation capabilities have the potential to make information and computing radically more accessible and easier to use. We look forward to incorporating better conversational features into products like Google Assistant, Search, and Workspace. We're also exploring how to give capabilities to developers and enterprise customers. Lambda is a huge step forward in natural conversation, but it is still trained only on text. When people communicate with each other, they do it across images, text, audio, and video. So we need to build models that allow people to naturally ask questions across different types of information. These are called multimodal models. Let's say we want a model to recognize all facets of a road trip. That could mean the words road trip, written or spoken in any language, images, sounds, and videos, and concepts associated with road trips, such as weather and directions. So you can imagine one day planning a road trip and asking Google to find a route with beautiful mountain views. You can also use this to search for something within a video. For example, when you say, show me the part where the lion roars at sunset, we will get you to that exact moment in a video. It's It's still early days, but later on in the keynote, you'll hear from Prabhakar about the progress we are making towards more natural 
and intuitive ways of interacting with search. Translation, image recognition, voice recognition, text-to-speech, transformers. All of this work laid the foundation for complex models like Lambda and multimodal. Our compute infrastructure is how we drive and sustain these advances. And tensor processing units are a big part of that. Today, I'm excited to announce our next generation, the TPU V4. These are powered by the V4 chip, which is more than twice as fast as the V3 chip. TPUs are connected together into supercomputers called pods. A single V4 pod contains 4,096 V4 chips. And each pod has 10x the interconnect bandwidth per chip at scale compared to any other networking technology. This makes it possible for a TPU V4 pod to deliver more than 1x a flop, 10 to the 18th power floating point operations per second of computing power. Think about it this way. If 10 million people were on their laptops right now, then all of those laptops put together would almost match the computing power of one exaflop. This is the fastest system we have ever deployed at Google and a historic milestone for us. Previously, to get an exaflop, you needed to build a custom supercomputer. But we already have many of these deployed today. And we'll soon have dozens of TPU v4 pods in our data centers many of which will be operating at or near 90% carbon-free energy. And our TPU v4 pods will be available to our cloud customers later this year. It's tremendously exciting to see the space of innovation. As we look further into the future, there are types of problems that classical computing will not be able to solve in a reasonable time. Quantum computing represents a fundamental shift because it harnesses the properties of quantum mechanics and gives us the best chance of understanding the natural world. Achieving our quantum milestone was a tremendous accomplishment, but we are still at the very beginning of a multi-year journey. One problem we face today is that our physical qubits are very fragile. Even cosmic rays from outer space can destroy quantum information. To solve more complex problems, our next milestone is to create an error-corrected logical qubit. It's simply a collection of physical qubits stable enough to hold quantum information for a long period of time. We start by reducing the error rate of our physical qubits, then combining a thousand physical qubits to create a single logical qubit, and then scaling that up to a thousand logical qubits at which point we will have created an error-corrected quantum computer. Today, we are focused on enabling scientists and developers to access beyond classical computational resources. But we hope to one day create an error-corrected quantum computer. And success could mean everything from increasing battery efficiency to creating more sustainable energy to improved drug discovery and so much more. The roadmap begins in our new data center, which we are calling the Quantum AI Campus. Let's step inside. Michael, are you there? Hey, Sundar, how's it going? Yeah, I'm here, and I'm excited to learn why I'm here, and I'm guessing that's why he's here. Hey, Michael. Hey. I'm Eric, lead engineer here. I'd like to welcome you to one of the most powerful quantum computing facilities in the world. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's this, can I touch it? Uh, yeah, that's a quantum processor, and inside, are these actual physical qubits. Oh, hey, little guy. Qubits are the fundamental building blocks of quantum computers, but they're incredibly fragile. Oh. Even the tiniest particles can disrupt their operation. Right. Which is why we work so hard to create the optimal environment to keep them stable. Right, and I'm guessing the optimal environment doesn't include, like, Cheeto dust. So I'm just uh, going to put this no, puppy right it doesn't. back. Thanks. Let me show you where the clean ones go. Cool. So we built this campus to inspire all of our quantum mechanics and to show the world what the future of computing looks like. Good for you, dude. Look at you, dude. Thanks. That's a cool lamp. Uh, it's not a lamp. This is actually a cryostat, and you're looking at the inside of a quantum computer. Wow, cryostat. I love that word, cryostat. I'm guessing people want to know, what makes a cryostat a cryostat? Eric? Well, everything you see here, from the wiring to the aluminum, copper, and gold metal stages, have been chosen to create a cold and quiet environment for our quantum processors to operate. Right, right, right. And in English? 
Uh, it's a fridge for our qubits. Right, right. And how cold are we talking about? Uh, we approach near absolute zero, mm. 10 millikelvin to be precise. Wow. Which means that parts of our lab are some of the coldest places in the universe. Wow, colder than Canada? Uh, yeah, colder than Canada. Well, it's not just temperature that's important. In fact, we want to remove all distractions from our qubits. Right. Including unwanted electrical and magnetic signals. Yeah, yeah. Who wants that, right? Well, let me show you what the final product looks like. Is this a cryostat? Uh, no, that's not a cryostat. What about this? Is this a cryostat? That's not a cryostat. No? This is a cryostat. Nice. In fact, this is a fully assembled quantum computer. Yeah? So where's the keyboard? Uh, well, there's no keyboard, but it contains everything you've just seen inside and custom control electronics, all of which were designed and built by our team here at Google. Wait, 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 wait. Is this a Bob Ross? Is he on the team? Tell me he's on the team. He's not on the team. OK. But, but this mural is our homage to Mother Nature. See, quantum is the language of nature, and we're learning to speak it here. It will enable us to run precise simulations of the natural world, unlocking answers that would otherwise remain unknown. OK, so let me see if I get this right. OK, so these qubits are really smart, right? But they're really picky about their work environment. So you got to put them in a lamp, right? But even then, they're like, no, I don't want anybody eating any Cheetos around me. And they're like, I'm sorry, OK, I didn't know, right? So then you've got to wrap them in like this Bob Ross blanket of love, right? And then you keep them there until they can tell us how to think like the Earth. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, you know what this is? This is the power button, and I want to well, start it. I, I'm, we're not quite there yet. I'm glad you're on board. Okay. Today, we've reached the first milestone beyond classical computational capabilities. This is us. Yeah, we're here. Everything you've seen here today is what we're using to build to our next milestone, an error-corrected logical qubit. Right. And from there, We'll tile thousands of those together to reach our ultimate goal, an error-corrected quantum, quantum computer. computer. Right. That's my goal, too. Well, you're in luck. We're building a team to assemble all the right ingredients all right here in the Quantum AI campus that you just helped us unveil. So thank you very much, Michael. Uh, no, you know what? Thank you, and thank you for everyone uh, that's joining us. Uh, I want to leave you with a couple of my favorite words that I just learned, uh, one of them being qubits, cute qubits, uh, cryostat, right, and melon chilies. Sundar, it was a pleasure doing science with you. It was a pleasure doing science with you too, Michael. We recognize that building an error-corrected quantum computer will be incredibly challenging. But solving hard problems and advancing the state of the art is how we build the most helpful products. At Google, we know that our products can only be as helpful as they are safe. And advances in computer science and AI are how we continue to make them better. We keep more users safe by blocking malware, phishing attempts, spam messages, and potential cyber attacks than anyone else in the world. And our focus on data minimization pushes us to do more with them. Two years ago at I.O., I announced AutoDelete, which encourages users to have their activity data automatically and continuously deleted. We have since made auto-delete the default for all new Google accounts. Now, after 18 months, we automatically delete your data unless you tell us to do it sooner. And this is now active for over 2 billion accounts. All our products are guided by three important principles. With one of the world's most advanced security infrastructures, our products are secure by default. We strictly uphold responsible data practices, so every product we build is private by design. And we create easy-to-use privacy and security settings so you are in control. I'd like to invite Jen on stage to share some examples of how we apply these principles and make every day safer with Google. Thanks, Sundar. We believe that protecting your privacy starts with the world's most advanced security. It seems like every day we hear about another cyber attack that puts emails and personal data at risk. To keep our users safe, everything we build is secure by default. Each of our products is protected with advanced AI-driven technologies. In fact, every day, Gmail automatically blocks more than 100 million phishing attempts. Google Photos encrypts 4 billion photos. And Google Play Protect runs security scans on 100 billion installed apps around the world. 
But the single most common security vulnerability today is still bad passwords. Consumer research has shown that two thirds of people admit to using the same password across accounts, which multiplies their risk. Ultimately, we're on a mission to create a password free future. That's why no one is doing more than we are to advance phone based authentication. And in the meantime, we're focused on helping everyone use strong, unique passwords for every account. Our password manager creates, remembers, saves, and autofills passwords for you. It's already used by over half a billion people, but we want to free everyone from password pain. That's why today we're announcing four new upgrades that make our password manager more helpful. First, we're making it easier than ever to get started with a simple tool that imports passwords saved in other password managers. Next, we'll have deeper integration across both Chrome and Android, so your secure passwords go with you from sites to apps. Third, automatic password alerts will let you know if we detect any of your saved passwords have become compromised in a third party breach. And lastly, what I'm especially excited about, a quick fix feature in Chrome where the assistant will help you navigate directly to your compromised accounts and change your passwords in seconds. Our continued investment in our password manager makes it just one of the many ways Google is the safer way to sign into anything online. Another core principle is ensuring that each of our products is private by design. This means continuously making thoughtful decisions about when, how, and why data is used in our products, including data that's used for ads. Our principles drive us to draw a strict line between what's in and what's out. For example, we never sell your personal information to anyone. We never use the content you store in apps like Gmail, Photos, and Drive for ads purposes. And we never use sensitive information to personalize ads, like health, race, religion, or sexual orientation. It's simply off limits. And while we've always believed that ads play an important role in supporting a free and open web for everyone, we're equally committed to making the web more private and secure. Through the Open Source Privacy Sandbox Initiative, we're collaborating with publishers, content creators, advertisers, and industry organizations like the W3C to develop new privacy preserving solutions that will shape the future of online advertising. Making our products private by design also drives us to build groundbreaking computing technologies that enable personalized experiences while protecting your private information. One technology we've been pioneering is differential privacy, which allows us to use large aggregated data sets while guaranteeing that your individual data can never be identified as yours. No one has scaled the use of differential privacy more than we have. To help developers everywhere use differential privacy, we created the world's largest open source library of differentially private algorithms, which has advanced so many important fields from cancer research to census analytics. Another important technology is federated learning invented here at Google in 2016. It enables machine learning models to be trained centrally without any raw data leaving your device. And since building it into Gboard and messages, we've saved people countless hours of typing with helpful suggestions. This is just one of the ways we build for privacy everywhere that computing happens, both in the cloud and on device. And speaking of devices, to make billions of Android phones private by design, we developed Android's private compute core. It's uniquely open source and designed to privately process and protect sensitive data. It powers features like live caption without sharing audio data with Google or any other apps. No one else offers this kind of technically enforced, verifiable privacy. And the Android team will be coming up in a bit to share more. These are just a few of the ways we're building the most advanced privacy preserving technologies into our products to keep your data private, safe, and secure. We know that a big part of feeling safe online is having control over your data. Privacy is personal. So we build powerful privacy and security settings that let people choose what's right for them. 
You can find them in your Google account, which saw over 3 billion visits last year. We also know that some controls are most helpful when they're built right into the app, like when we added an incognito mode in Search, Maps, and YouTube. Today, we're announcing a few new controls that you'll see in our most popular apps. For example, people tell us they sometimes wish they could easily delete the last thing they searched. And we heard you. So now, just tap your profile picture to access your menu and immediately delete recent search history from your account. We're also working to make privacy controls more accessible in Maps. Now, when you see places you visited in your timeline, we'll remind you that it's because you turned on location history, which you can easily turn off right there in your timeline. And lastly, we're rolling out locked folder and photos, first on Google Pixels and coming to more Android devices throughout the year. Photos you add to this passcode protected space are saved separately, so they won't show up as you scroll through Google Photos or any other apps on your device. This feature would have been helpful for me last year when we surprised our kids with a new puppy and we needed to hide the photos before we brought Splash home. As Sundar said, there's nothing more important than keeping you safe online. Building products that are secure by default, private by design, and that give you control is how we ensure that every day you're safer with Google. Just as we've engineered advanced computing solutions to protect your privacy, we continue to think about future advances in AI and their potential for making our products even more helpful. Not surprisingly, so much of what we do starts with search. And next, you'll hear more about this from Prabhakar. Thanks, Jan. Today, we are excited to share how our advances in AI are enabling us to understand the world more deeply than ever before, opening up helpful experiences for you across Google Search, Maps, Shopping, and Photos. Let's start with Search. 20 years ago, Google was just 10 blue links, connecting people to the information they needed from the millions of web pages out there. Since then, we've continued to innovate to understand new forms of information like images, videos, places, and more. All of this is in pursuit of our mission to make information accessible and useful. As Sundar mentioned, early research with Lambda and multimodality is pushing the boundaries of natural language understanding. And today, I'm excited to share how we'll be bringing some of these research advances to Google Search with a multitask unified model, or MUM, as we like to call it. Like BERT, it's built on the transformer architecture, but it turns up the dial. You see, MUM is a thousand times more powerful than BERT. But what makes this technology groundbreaking is its ability to multitask in order to unlock information in new ways. Here are a few tasks it can handle at the same time. It can acquire deep knowledge of the world. It can understand language and generate it too. It can train across 75 languages at once, unlike most AI models, which train on one language at a time. And then what makes mom even more amazing is that it's multimodal, which means it can simultaneously understand different forms of information, like text, images, and video. We've already started some internal pilots to see the types of queries it might be able to solve and the billions of topics it might help you explore. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you're an avid hiker planning your next adventure. You might ask, I've hiked Mount Adams, and now I want to hike Mount Fuji next fall. What should I do differently to prepare? This is a question you could casually ask a friend, but search engines today can't answer it directly 
because it's so conversational and nuanced. Mom is changing the game. With its language understanding capabilities, you would know you're looking to compare two mountains and also understand that prepare could include things like fitness training for the terrain and hiking gear for fall weather. Then, it's able to surface useful insights based on its deep knowledge of the world. Here, it's highlighting that Mount Fuji is roughly the same elevation as Mount Adams, but fall is the rainy season on Mount Fuji, so you might need a waterproof jacket. It would also give you pointers to go deeper on topics, like how to prepare the right gear with articles, videos, and images from across the web. Now, a huge limitation of accessing information is the language it's written in. If there are insights about Mount Fuji in Japanese, you might not know they exist if you don't search in Japanese. But mom can transfer language across multiple languages to give you a richer, more comprehensive answer. But it doesn't stop there. Because mom is multimodal, it can understand different types of information simultaneously. So now imagine taking a photo of your hiking boots and asking, can I use these to hike Mount Fuji? Mom would be able to understand the content of the image and the intent behind your query, let you know that your hiking boots would just work fine, and then point you to a list of recommended gear in a Mount Fuji blog. <laughs> While we're in the early days of exploring this new technology, we're excited about its potential to solve more complex questions, no matter how you ask them. But we're already finding other ways to apply AI to bring you new information. Take Google Lens, which lets you search what you see from your camera, your photos, or right from your search bar. Around the world, people use Lens to translate over a billion words every day. This translation feature has been especially useful for students, many of whom might be learning in a language they're less comfortable with. So now, thanks to our Lens team in Zurich, we're rolling out a new capability that combines visual translation with educational content from the web to help people learn in more than 100 languages. For instance, you can easily snap a photo of a science problem and Lens will provide learning resources in your preferred language. Let's take a look at how a student in Indonesia is using this new feature. Nama aku Siti Hupisa dipanggil Mamai. Aku kelas 9 SMP. Tentunya aku ingin menjadi ahli bahasa dan seorang dosen bahasa Inggris. Tapi kegiatan belajar di masa pandemi ini untuk aku sendiri agak lebih susah. Orang tua aku juga tidak bisa bahasa Inggris. Jadi, mereka tidak bisa bantu aku kalau kesulitan. Dia tanya ke orang, ibu kurang, kurang paham. Google Lens memudahkan kegiatan belajar di rumah. Misalnya aku mendapat tugas pelajaran matematik yang bertuliskan bahasa Inggris. Gak hanya translate, dari situ aku juga bisa terhubung dan langsung mencari tahu apa terjemahan dan solusi untuk mengerjakan pelajaran matematika itu. Untuk saat ini, aku sedang berusaha keras untuk belajar lebih tekun, lebih rajin. Saya mau menggunakan pengetahuan saya untuk membantu masyarakat. Saya mau jadi anak yang membanggakan orang tua. Iya, senang. Ibu senang sekali. Belajar tidak pantang menyerah, gitu. It's always inspiring to see stories like Mamais. And it brings to life the power of visual information, especially for learning. That's why we brought augmented reality to search two years ago at I.O. to help you explore concepts visually up close and in your space. You might remember the shark that joined us on stage. Last year, when many of us first started sheltering in place, families around the world found joy in AR. From tigers to cars, 
people interacted with this feature more than 200 million times. Now, we're bringing some of the world's best athletes to AR, so you can see how they perform some of their most impressive feats right in front of you. Beginning today, you can see how Megan Rapino juggles a soccer ball or how Naomi Osaka pulls off a 125 mile per hour serve. You can even see Simone Biles land one of the most difficult combinations ever completed. We recently caught up with Simone to get her reaction to the AR version of herself. Let's take a look. So first you're gonna go to Google search. Google search. And search yourself. Okay, Simone Biles in 3D. And then you're gonna view in your space. You gotta scan the floor. So let's scan the area. Ooh, and yes. she's here. Ah. <laughs> Let's do so. Oh my gosh. She goes for the triple double. This is very accurate. I see all the details that I need to get back in the gym and work on. <laughs> Nails it. <laughs> that one, yeah. Simone Biles, double double dismount. Pops up anywhere. Wow, look at that. Anyways, let's turn her so we can see it from the front. It sounds just like you're in the arena. Go down to 5%, little one. Oh. There she is. Itsy Bitsy Biles. That's the smallest triple-double I've ever seen. <laughs> we need to start competing in AR. It's much simpler. It saves the nerves. <laughs> no matter how many times I see that, I still think it's pretty incredible. Innovations like mom, lens, and AR a part of our quest to make information more helpful. But information is only helpful if it's trustworthy and reliable. The world is constantly changing. Getting access to reliable information is particularly critical during times like the pandemic or breaking news. It's in these moments and so many others that people turn to Google. At our foundation, we design our ranking systems to prioritize high-quality content. And for critical topics like COVID, we elevate information from expert sources. People come to Google to evaluate claims they've heard, whether that's in conversations with friends or something they read about online. Over the past year, searches for, is it true that we're even higher than how to bake bread? And that's saying something, given last year's sourdough craze. We're building features that make it easier for you to evaluate the credibility of information right in Google search. One of the ways we're doing this is with about this result, a feature we launched earlier this year that makes it easier to check the source. Just tap the three dots next to the search result to see the details about the website including its description, when it was first indexed, and whether your connection to the site is secure. This context is especially important if it's a site you haven't heard of and want to learn more about it. This month, we'll start rolling out about this result to all English results worldwide with more languages to come. And later this year, we're going to add even more detail, like how the site describes itself, what other sources are saying about it, and related articles to check out. This is part of our ongoing commitment to provide you with the highest quality of results and help you evaluate information online. When we understand information, we can make it more helpful to you, whether that be information on the web, from your camera, or from the billions of places in the physical world. And to hear more about how AI is powering our most helpful map ever, here's Liz. Thanks, Prabhakar. We're constantly working on new features to make maps more helpful for the more than one billion of you who use it every month. Advances in AI are helping us reimagine what a map can be. This year alone, we're on track to release more than 100 AI-driven improvements to give people richer and more contextual information about the world around them. 
Let me share just a few examples. We've seen how helpful AR can be to see how athletes perform their most impressive feats. Three years ago, with live view and Google Maps, we were the first ones to use AR at scale to help see where to go with signs and arrows overlaid on the real world. Today, we're still the only company who has AR navigation and maps in more than 100 countries, from big cities to rural towns. So far, though, LiveView has been focused on navigation to help you easily get from point A to point B. But now, you can also use it to explore the world around you. You'll be able to access LiveView right from the map and instantly see details about the shops and the restaurants around you, including how busy they are, recent reviews, and photos of those popular dishes. This is possible because we match what your camera sees with millions of businesses sharing rich information on Google Maps. In addition, there are a host of new features coming to Live View later this year. First, we're adding prominent virtual street signs to help you navigate those complex intersections. Second, we'll point you towards key landmarks and places that are important for you, like the direction of your hotel. Third, we're bringing it indoors to help you get around some of the hardest to navigate buildings, like airports, transit stations, and malls. Indoor Live View will start rolling out in top train stations and airports in Zurich this week and will come to Tokyo next month. But AR isn't the only way we're bringing a whole new level of richness to Google Maps. We've heard from many of you that you'd like to have more granular information about your surrounding. That's why we're bringing you the most detailed street maps we've ever made. Take this image of Columbus Circle, one of the most complicated intersections in Manhattan. You can now see where the sidewalks, the crosswalks, the pedestrian islands are. Something that might be incredibly helpful if you're taking young children out on a walk or absolutely essential if you're using a wheelchair. Thanks to our application of advanced AI technology on robust street view and aerial imagery, we're on track to launch detailed street maps in 50 new cities by the end of the year. Having access to rich information is useful, but it can also become overwhelming. So we're making the map more dynamic and more tailored, highlighting the most relevant information exactly when you need it. If it's 8 a.m. on a weekday, we'll display the coffee shops and bakeries more prominently in the map. While at 5 p.m., we'll highlight the dinner restaurants that match your tastes. You can see which places you've been to and get more suggestions for similar spots with just a single tap. And if you're in a new city, we'll make it easier to find those local landmarks and tourist attractions right on the map. You'll start seeing this more tailored map in the coming weeks. And as you're planning your day, people have found it really useful, especially during this pandemic, to see how busy a place is before heading out. Now we're expanding this capability from specific places, like restaurants and shops, to neighborhoods with a feature called area busyness. Say you're in Rome and want to head over to the Spanish Steps and its nearby shops. With area busyness, you'll be able to understand at a glance if it's the right time for you to go, based on how busy that part of the city is in real time. And as you heard before, we use our industry-leading differential privacy techniques to protect anonymity in this feature. Area busyness will roll out globally in the coming months. So that was a lot. To recap, we are expanding our live view capabilities, making maps more detailed and tailored, and showing you how busy certain areas are to help you make sense of the world all around you. All of this is possible because of our deep, deep commitment for over 16 years to build the world's most helpful map for people everywhere. That means mapping roads across more than 60 million kilometers listing more than a billion buildings, creating a community of over 150 million local guides, and finally, applying the most advanced AI technology, all so you can have the most accurate, comprehensive, and detailed map wherever you live in the world, on any device, Android or iOS. Access to rich information is crucial, whether you're exploring a new neighborhood 
or trying to get things done. And over the past year, that's increasingly meant turning to Google to help you shop. To tell you more about how we're making it easier to shop online, from inspiration to action, here's Bill. Thanks, Liz. You've already heard how we're innovating to understand information and make it more helpful for you. We're doing this in a big way for shopping. More than a billion times a day, people are shopping across Google. And we're constantly working to make that experience better, whether you're browsing for inspiration or ready to buy. Now, let's talk about all of the ways we're innovating in shopping. Many of you are familiar with our knowledge graph, which revolutionized structured information about people, places, and things. We're now introducing the shopping graph, our most comprehensive data set for billions of products and the merchants that sell them. Building on the knowledge graph, the shopping graph brings together information from websites, prices, reviews, videos, and most importantly, the product data we receive from brands and retailers directly. Because the shopping graph knows about so many products, we can connect users with over 24 billion listings to buy those items from millions of merchants across the web, helping you find more of what you're looking for from a broader range of sellers, and giving you just as much or more choice in the digital world as you have in the physical world. The best part is that the shopping graph spans across Google, making it easier to go from inspiration to purchase no matter where you are. Let's see how this comes to life across shopping moments, from lens to search, photos, YouTube, and Chrome. As we all know, shopping inspiration often strikes when we see something we like in the world around us. And for these moments, Google Lens is awesome. It turns the world into your own personal showroom. For example, I was eating outside at a restaurant recently and really liked their patio furniture. So I opened my Google app, and right from the search bar, I could use Lens to find the exact set I was looking for, and similar items too. I showed the patio set to my daughter, but she didn't love it. So it was back to the drawing board. We did a bit more browsing together, starting with the Google Images tab on search, where we see hundreds of millions of shopping searches each month. Thanks to the shopping graph, we could explore options from across the web to find what we liked, see that it was in stock, and check out with the retailer. I have this habit, though. I'm constantly taking screenshots of products I like, but they usually end up buried in my photos. Here's one I've saved for a pair of sneakers I saw. But now, to solve for this, when you view any screenshots in Google Photos, there'll be a suggestion to search the photo with lens. You'll see organic search results that can help you find that pair of shoes or browse similar styles. Then, once you have ideas, you probably want to do some research and might end up on YouTube. Earlier this year, we shared that we're building a new experience to make it easier to shop products you learn about from your favorite YouTube creators. That experience is in Pilot now, so stay tuned for updates. And since we're talking about researching, I don't know about you, but I often jump around from site to site when I'm comparing products. And if I get distracted or close any tabs, it can be hard to keep track of items I've found. Soon on Chrome, when you open a new tab, you'll be able to see your open carts from the past couple of weeks. For example, I'm reminded that I've still got a shirt in my 10 tree cart and a few things in my Lowe's cart. We'll also find you promotions and discounts for your open carts if you choose to opt in. Here, I can see Electronic Express is offering 10% off. Your personal information and what's in your carts are never shared with anyone externally without your permission. Now, once you're done researching and are ready to buy, we also want to help you get the best value. Coming soon, we'll use your favorite loyalty programs for merchants like Sephora and Target to show you the best purchase options. In this example, since you're a Sephora Beauty Insider, you already qualify for a promotion. And if you're not ready to buy, you can opt in for price drop notifications. Taking a step back, these experiences are only possible because of our vibrant community of retailers on Google. We're proud to take an open ecosystem approach that helps any merchant, both big and small, get discovered. And that gives you more shopping choices. This has been more important than ever in what's been a tough time for businesses. That's why this past year, we accelerated our plans and made it free for merchants to sell their products across Google. 
Since then, we've seen an 80% increase in merchants on Google, with the vast majority being small and medium-sized businesses. And today, we're making it easier than ever for merchants of all sizes to get on Google. Together with Shopify, we're excited to launch a seamless integration so that the more than 1.7 million merchants on Shopify can reach more consumers in a matter of minutes. With just a few clicks, these retailers can sign up to appear across Google's 1 billion shopping journeys each day. From search, to maps, images, to lens, and YouTube. We believe you deserve the most choice available, and will continue to innovate on shopping along every step of the way. So far, you've heard many of the ways we're using AI to make information more useful for you. AI can also help us revisit our favorite memories and moments, especially this past year when many of us have been feeling nostalgic. To talk about new innovations in Google Photos, here's Shimreet. Thanks, Bill. It's great to be back on campus talking with you all about Google Photos. We capture photos and videos so we can look back and remember. They help us feel connected. And today, there are more than 4 trillion photos and videos stored in Google Photos. But having so many photos of loved ones, screenshots, selfies, all stored together makes it hard to rediscover the important moments. In fact, the vast majority of photos in Google Photos are never viewed. And we've heard from you how powerful it is to rediscover a memory that helps you tell your story and reconnect. So today, I want to show you new features that use AI to resurface meaningful moments and bring your memories to life, all while giving you more control so you can choose what you want to relive. Soon, we're launching a new way to look back that we're calling Little Patterns. Little patterns show the magic in everyday moments by identifying not so obvious moments and resurfacing them to you. I'll show you how this works. This feature uses machine learning to translate photos into a series of numbers and then compares how visually or conceptually similar these images are. When we find a set of three or more photos with similarities such as shape or color, we'll surface them as a pattern. When we started testing little patterns, we saw some great stories come to life, like how one of our engineers traveled the world with their favorite orange backpack, or how our product manager, Christy, had a habit of capturing objects of similar shape and color. Or for me, I received a pattern of my family hanging out on the couch over the years. We have so many fun memories there, but I didn't realize how many pics I'd snapped until I saw this. These photos on their own wouldn't necessarily be meaningful, but when they're pieced together, they tell a story that's uniquely yours. As always, these memories are privately presented to you and are only visible to your Google Photos account. In addition to using machine learning to better curate your memories, we also want to bring these moments to life with cutting edge effects. Last year, we launched cinematic photos to help you relive your memories in a more vivid way. I want to show you how we're building on this feature with computational photography to make still photos even more immersive. When we take a photo, most of us actually take two to three photos of the same shot, just to make sure we get the right one. Any parent who tries to get all their kids smiling and looking at the camera at the same time will know what I mean. Cinematic moments will take these near duplicate images and use neural networks to synthesize the movement between image A and image B. We interpolate the photos and fill in the gaps by creating new frames. The end result is a vivid, moving picture. And the cool thing about this effect is it can work on any pair of images, whether they were captured on Android, iOS, or scanned from a photo album. Creating this effect from scratch would take professional animators hours, but by applying machine learning, we can automatically bring this experience right to your gallery. And we know that looking back is never a one-size-fits-all solution. It's more meaningful when you can look back on content that's personalized to you. 
So later this year, you'll see new types of memories that are relevant to the moments you celebrate, whether that's Diwali, Lunar New Year, or something else. For me, my family celebrates Hanukkah, so I can look back on a collection of Hanukkah moments right in my photo grid. In addition to providing personalized content to look back on, we also want to give you more control. We heard from you that controls can be helpful for anyone who has been through a tough life event, breakup, or loss. Specifically, we heard from the transgender community that resurfacing certain photos can be painful. So we are working directly with our partners at GLAAD and listening to feedback to understand how we can make reminiscing more inclusive. These insights inspired us to give you the control to hide photos of certain people or time periods from our memories feature. And soon, you'll be able to remove a single photo from a memory, rename the memory, or remove it entirely. We're making all these controls easy to find, so you can make changes in just a few taps. And so, this summer, you'll be able to uncover little patterns, rediscover meaningful memories, or immerse yourself in a cinematic moment. And you can do it all on your own terms with new controls. Looking back is an important part of the human experience, which is why Google Photos is making it easier than ever to relive your memories. Thank you. Thanks, Shamrit. I'm really excited by the progress we are making with AI. As you've heard today, we're using AI to advance our understanding of information and build more helpful experiences across Google Search, Maps, Shopping, and Photos. Next, you're going to hear about innovations in our computing platforms. We're excited to show you all of the improvements to Android 12, the newest release of our open platform, starting with a fundamental change to how you experience it. I'll hand it off to Matthias to give you a look. From the beginning, design has made computers more helpful by making them easier to use, more personal. In 2014, we introduced material design to address the explosion of mobile phones. It set a new standard for Android apps, and for Google, it rationalized our products simply and beautifully. But today, the challenge is even bigger. Now we're at a moment where computers are showing up in places that we never imagined. It's also a moment where people are yearning to express their individuality and demanding control from their technology. We believe this is a challenge for the whole industry, to acknowledge that emotion is essential and that beauty is personal. To face this challenge, we had to question everything. Instead of form following function, what if form followed feeling? Instead of Google Blue, we imagined Material You, a new design that includes you as a co-creator, letting you transform the look and feel of all your apps by generating personal material palettes that mix color science with a designer's eye and engineering UI elements to respond in real time, we can delight every style. A new design that can flex to every screen and fit every device. Your apps adapt comfortably every place you go. A new design that never compromises on accessibility, granting transformative control of contrast, size, and even line width material can satisfy every need. No longer defaulting to one size fits all, material you is a radical new way to think about design. 
we invested years into advancing UI engineering, making it possible for any app, not just Google's, to blend in their user styles and stay unique and beautiful. As designers, sharing control of every pixel is terrifying. But that leap of faith is revolutionizing design across Google. For the first time, we can consider the details of devices together with the pixels on their screens. We unify everything that Google makes through common proportions, textures, and shapes. We give you tasteful choices, blending into your homes and complementing your wardrobes. More than choice, we uniquely tailor your Google products for the perfect fit. Beyond light and dark, a mode for every mood. These selections can travel with your account across every app and every device. Material U comes first to Google Pixel this fall, including all of your favorite Google apps. And over the following year, we will continue our vision, bringing it to the web, Chrome OS, wearables, smart displays, and all of Google's products. Material U is a way to design differently. We can't wait to see what brings you joy and what you find beautiful. Next are the details of Android 12. Beyond the redesigned widgets and your material palette, Samir will show you our most personal OS ever. everyone, it's great to be back live at Google I.O. What you just saw was a peek into the biggest design change to Android in years. And we're going to go through all of it. But first, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. Just this week, we crossed an amazing milestone. There are now 3 billion active Android devices around the world. This would never have been possible without the entire Android ecosystem. But there's so much more to do, and Android 12 is one of our most ambitious releases ever. There are three big themes that we're focused on. First, smartphones are deeply personal, and we think your phone should adapt to you, not the other way around. Second, to keep your personal information safe, the OS should be secure by default and private by design. And third, we want all of your devices, TVs, cars, watches, and more, to work better together with your phone at the center. I'm excited to show you more. So let's start by taking a look at our new UI for Android. We've overhauled everything from the lock screen to system settings, revamping the way we use color, shapes, light, and motion, inspired by Material U. Let me show you what we've done with color. We've got something new planned for Google Pixel using what we call color extraction. Think of it as one part art and one part science. Watch what happens when the wallpaper changes. Like if I use this picture of my kids actually getting along for once. I set it as my background and voila! The system creates a custom palette based on the colors in my photo. We use a clustering algorithm with material color targets to determine which colors are dominant, which ones are complementary, and which ones just look great together. It then applies hues across different parts of the interface. In other words, it's going to be beautiful. The result is a one-of-a-kind design, just for you. 
and you'll see it first on Google Pixel in the fall. But this new UI is more than a visual redesign. Many interactions have been simplified and system spaces purposefully reimagined. Starting from the lock screen, the design is more playful with dynamic lighting. Pick up your phone and it lights up from the bottom of your screen. Press the power button to wake up the phone instead and the light ripples out from your touch. Even the clock is in tune with you. When you don't have any notifications, it appears larger on the lock screen, so you know you're all caught up. The notification shade is more intuitive with a crisp, at a glance view of your app notifications, whatever you're currently listening to or watching, and quick settings that give you control over the OS with just a swipe and a tap. The quick setting space doesn't just look and feel different, it's been redesigned to include Google Pay and home controls while still allowing for customization so you can have everything you need right at your fingertips. And now, you can invoke the Google Assistant by long pressing the power button, making it easier than ever to harness the power of Google. Our engineers have done some pretty amazing work on performance in Android 12 to make all the motion and animation in the UI super smooth. We greatly reduce lock contention in key system services such as Activity, Window, and Package Manager. And the team also reduced the CPU time of Android's system server by a whopping 22%. Basically, everything's faster. There's a lot to explore in this new design, and I can't wait for you all to try it out. Now, the design isn't the only part of the device that's personal. Our phones hold so much important information, and it's critical to keep it private and secure. To tell you more about that, let me hand it off to Suzanne. Hi, everyone. From our first device to three billion today, we design security and privacy for everyone, no matter how expensive their device is. We built game-changing capabilities for everyone, from file-based encryption to TLS by default and secure DNS to prevent traffic tampering and data breaches. And since 2017, Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy have continually received the highest security rating in Gartner's annual mobile OS comparison report. Simply put, the most secure devices run on Android. And with Android 12, we're going even further to keep your information safe. Let's start with a common experience, granting an app access to sensitive information. Turn-by-turn -turn directions based on your precise location are really helpful. But we recognize that this access can also raise privacy questions. To give people more transparency and control, we've created a new privacy dashboard that shows you what type of data was accessed and when. This dashboard reports on all the apps on your phone, including all of your Google apps. And we've made it really easy to revoke an app's permission directly from the dashboard. We've also added an indicator to make it clear when an app is using your camera or microphone. But let's take that a step further. If you don't want any apps to access the microphone or camera, even if you've granted them permission in the past, we've added two new toggles in quick settings so you can completely disable those sensors for every app. So those are a few examples of privacy you can immediately see. We're excited to share more on under the hood privacy, privacy that's baked into the heart of Android. As machine vision, speech recognition, and AI become increasingly beneficial, there are even more opportunities for the OS to be helpful. And to make it easier for everyone to embrace these new innovations, we're combining cutting edge features with powerful privacy. You heard Jen talk about the ways we're building private by design technology. Thanks to advances here with Android's private compute core, we're able to introduce new features using our unique AI capabilities while still keeping your personal information safe, private, and local to your phone. 
Android's private compute core enables things like now playing, which tells you what song is playing in the background, and smart reply, which suggests responses to your chats based on your personal reply patterns. And there's more to come later this year. And by the way, all of the sensitive audio and language processing happens exclusively on your device. It's isolated from the network to preserve your privacy. And like the rest of Android, Private Compute Core is open source. It's fully inspectable and verifiable by the security community. Android is the first commercial mobile operating system to enable technically enforced privacy like this. And this is just one of the ways we'll continue to pioneer innovation while also maintaining the highest standards of privacy, security, and safety. And there's a whole lot more for privacy and security in Android 12, which you can hear about in our What's New in Android Privacy session later today. Now I'll hand it back to Samir to talk about how we're building for a multi-device world. Thanks, Suzanne. Phones have become the center of our digital lives, and they interact with a ton of other devices we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Laptops, TVs, cars, and more. This next chapter of Android is focused on delightful and helpful experiences across all the devices that are connected to your phone, so that everything just works better together. Let's start by looking at how your phone works with your Chromebook. With a single tap, you can unlock and sign into your Chromebook when your phone is nearby. Incoming chat notifications from apps on your phone are right there in Chrome OS. And soon, if you want to share a picture, one click and you can access your phone's most recent photos. As another simple example, let's talk about your TV's remote. If your home is like mine, the remote is missing like 50% of the time. To keep movie night on track, we're building TV remote features directly into your phone. You can use voice search or even type with your phone's keyboard. It's effortless. For the more than 80 million devices using Android TV OS, this will work right out of the box. And we want all of your smart devices to work together, not just those in your home, even your car. In fact, Android Auto is available in more than 100 million cars. And the vast majority of new vehicles from loved brands like Ford, GM, Honda, and more will support Android Auto Wireless. No more cords. We're also really excited to introduce support for digital car key. Car key will allow you to lock, unlock, and start your car, all from your phone. It works with NFC and ultra-wideband technology, making it super secure and easy to use. Just walk up to your car, Step in, and away you go. And if your friend needs to borrow your car, you can remotely and securely share your digital key with them. Car Key is launching this fall with select Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy smartphones. And we're working with BMW and others across the industry to bring it to their upcoming cars. OK, that was a quick look at Android 12, which will launch this fall. But you can check out many of these features in the Android 12 beta today. Try it out on phones from 11 device makers, including Google Pixel, OnePlus, and Xiaomi. From a personalized UI to industry-leading innovation in privacy and security, and better experiences across all the devices in your life, there's so much transformative technology coming to your phone this year. Now, let's go beyond the phone to what we believe is the next evolution of mobile computing, the smartwatch. Today, I'm excited to tell you about the biggest update to Wear OS ever. We've been hard at work in three key areas. First, building a unified platform jointly with Samsung, focused on battery life, performance, and making it easier for developers to build great apps for the watch. Second, a whole new consumer experience, including updates to your favorite Google apps. And third, a world-class health and fitness service created by the newest addition to the Google family, Fitbit. 
there's a lot to share here. So let's get started by talking about our partnership with Samsung. Samsung and Google have a long history of collaborating. From the early days of Android, whenever we've tackled problems together, the ecosystem has grown for everyone. And now we're combining the best of our two operating systems, Wear OS and Tizen, into a unified platform focused on faster performance, longer battery life, and a thriving developer community. Working together, we've made apps start up to 30% faster, and animations and transitions are super smooth. We're also addressing what consumers always want from a wearable, longer battery life. By taking advantage of smaller, lower power cores, we can do things like run the heart rate sensor continuously, letting you better track your activity during the day and your sleep overnight, while giving you plenty of battery to spare for the next day. This combined platform isn't just for Google and Samsung. It will continue to be available for all device makers, which means developers can build apps with a single set of APIs and reach millions of consumers all over the world through the Google Play Store. To hear more about our partnership, it's my privilege to welcome Patrick Chomey, who leads all product and experience at Samsung Mobile to Google I.O. Thank you, Samir. For the past 12 years, Samsung and Google have worked together and made Samsung Galaxy and Android successful. We strive to create innovative experiences for Samsung Galaxy users. Most recently, we pioneered foldable devices and delivered rich communication experiences with Google Duo and Messages. And we are very excited about the new chapter of our partnership, wearables. The Galaxy Watch is already loved by Android smartphone users with our signature designs, cool watch faces ecosystem, an innovative health platform. We are bringing the best of these Galaxy Watch capabilities together with Google on a single platform, unifying the ecosystem for customers and developers. We work closely to optimize the performance, meaning better responsiveness and longer battery life. You will also be able to enjoy Google Apps and services like the Play Store, Google Maps, and more on the next Samsung Galaxy Watch. I am truly excited to welcome the developer community to our new vibrant and open ecosystem. Thank you. Back over to you, Samir. Thank you, Patrick. We're very excited about our partnership, and I know many developers will be thrilled about our unified platform. On top of this new foundation, Wear is also getting a big update to the consumer experience. To tell you more, let me hand it off to Bjorn. Thanks, Samir. Hey, everyone. Over the last seven years, we've learned a lot about what people love most about their smartwatch, and we've built a whole new experience with your preferences in mind. First, our new navigation system makes it faster than ever to get things done on your watch. No matter what you're doing, you can access shortcuts to important functions like instantly switching to another app. Let's say I'm running with Strava, and I'm about to hit that long, grueling hill. I just double press to switch to my last app, Spotify, put on my most motivating song, and then switch right back without missing a beat. It's such a simple thing for a more helpful and fluid experience. People have also told us they love getting glanceable pieces of helpful information just to swipe away from their watch face. So we're expanding our collection of tiles. Thanks to the new Tiles API, any developer can create one giving people many more ways to customize their home screen carousel. Now I can go from checking my next meeting to the weather forecast to this new tile from Calm, which helps me relax before a stressful event like presenting at Google I.O. <laughs> We've also been hard at work revamping the wearables app experience with a material design update and expanded capabilities, starting with your favorite ones from Google. This includes things like getting turn-by-turn -turn navigation in Google Maps when you leave your phone behind, 
being able to use Google Pay in 37 countries and more than 200 public transit systems around the world, or downloading music from a catalog of more than 70 million songs for offline listening in the YouTube Music app, even without your phone nearby. We're thrilled about all the ways you'll be able to experience the best of Google on your watch. And speaking of the best of Google, I'm delighted to welcome the newest member of the family to wear, Fitbit. Health and fitness is essential for wearables, and Fitbit has built a world-class service. So now, I'd love to welcome James to share more about our collaboration. Thanks, Bjorn. Nearly 14 years ago, my co-founder Eric Friedman and I started Fitbit with a mission to make everyone in the world healthier. We've shipped over 130 million Fitbit devices as part of that mission. But over time, we've gone beyond just helping people track their fitness to supporting them in their health journey by providing a range of devices from trackers to smartwatches, along with software and services that give users amazing health and wellness content and rich insights and analytics on their data. And now that we're part of Google, we're working to bring the best of Fitbit to Wear. We will be making some of Fitbit's most popular features available on Wear watches, including tracking your health progress throughout the day and on-risk celebrations to help keep you motivated. In the future, we'll be building premium smartwatches based on Wear that combine the best of Fitbit's health expertise with Google's ambient computing capabilities. All this is just the beginning of how, together with Google, we can do even more to inspire and motivate people on their journey to better health. Back to you, Samir. Thanks, James. I couldn't be more excited for all the updates starting to roll out this fall. Stay tuned for our developer keynote to learn more about new tools and libraries to help you build great apps for the watch. From a unified platform with Samsung to a new consumer experience and a world-class fitness service from Fitbit. This is a new era for the wearables ecosystem. So that was a lot. But before we move on from Android and Wear, there's something really important to me personally that I wanted to share with you. As the world's largest OS, we have a responsibility to build for everyone. As part of our ongoing commitment to product inclusion, we're working to make technology more accessible and equitable. One of the most important parts of any smartphone is the camera. Pictures are deeply personal and play an important role in shaping how people see you and how you see yourself. But for people of color, photography has not always seen us as we want to be seen, even in some of our own Google products. To make smartphone photography truly for everyone, we've been working with a group of industry experts to build a more accurate and inclusive camera. Let's take a look. People tend to think that cameras are objective, but a bunch of decisions go into making these tools. And historically, those decisions have not been taking people of color into account. It's still reaffirming this idea that black people aren't worthy of being seen. So far, we've partnered with a range of different expert image makers who've taken thousands of images to diversify our image data sets, helped improve the accuracy of our auto white balance and auto exposure algorithms, and given aesthetic feedback to make our images of people of color more beautiful and more accurate. The process was create almost like a guidebook to capture skin tones. I can't help but think of my mom. She still thinks that she's not beautiful because the pictures were taken of her when she's younger. How many little girls are thinking they're not beautiful because they were the darkest skinned person in the photo and they didn't get represented? The work is for us to do. It's not for people to change the way they look. It's for us to change the way the tools work. Our engineering team is learning a tremendous amount working with these experts. And we're making changes to our computational photography algorithms to address long-standing problems. For example, we're making auto white balance adjustments to algorithmically reduce stray light to bring out natural brown tones and prevent overbrightening and desaturation of darker skin tones. 
we're also able to reflect curly and wavy hair types more accurately in selfies with new algorithms that better separate a person from the background in any image. Although there's still much to do, we're working hard to bring all of what you've seen here and more to Google Pixel this fall. And we're committed to sharing everything we learn with the entire Android ecosystem so that together we can make cameras that work fairly for everyone. Thank you. As Sundar shared, we want to build a more helpful Google for everyone to increase knowledge, success, happiness, and health beyond anything previously possible. Today, I want to bring you inside to see how our recent advances in image recognition are helping to solve some of the world's big health challenges. Let's start with breast cancer, a diagnosis that one in eight women will face in their lifetime. Mammograms can help catch breast cancer earlier, but half of all women experience a false alarm across a decade of screening. So we've been working to make mammography better. Last year, our research demonstrated AI's potential to analyze screening mammograms with accuracy similar to clinicians. And now we're collaborating with Northwestern Medicine on an investigative device research study to better understand how AI can apply to the breast cancer screening process. Let's hear why this matters. When we found out grandma had breast cancer, it was in the late 90s and it wasn't something that anyone talked about. So my first mammogram was nerve-wracking. Waiting for the results. Every thought runs through your head. What if they find something? It was the worst feeling. One of the greatest anxieties about having mammography is the wait. It may take radiologists days, sometimes weeks, to get through the list of mammograms that need to be read. This is a national problem. We don't have enough people doing what we need to do. With the research study that we're doing with Google, we're using artificial intelligence that scans the mammogram image. It helps flag patients that may need additional imaging. I get an email that says the patient has been flagged. And if I agree, we take the patient and they take more pictures right away. We're just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we can do with artificial intelligence. We would like to see that we are getting patients faster through the system. If we can show that, then we can potentially change radiologists' operations in such a way that they can prioritize patients that need care first. So it will be very exciting to see the results of this study. This is a great example of how we're learning if AI could support clinicians in their work to triage patients. At Google, we want everyone to have the highest quality care. Technology can and should help close the equity gap. That's why we're working to bring this technology to bear on important global health challenges, from diabetic retinopathy to our new work to improve tuberculosis detection using image recognition on chest x-rays. We also believe AI can assist you in your daily health. People come to Google search every day to ask questions about their health. For example, we see billions of queries each year related to dermatologic issues. This is no surprise because derm conditions affect about 2 billion people globally. There are not enough specialists to meet the need. And so we wondered, how can AI help when you're searching and asking, what is this? Meet our AI-powered dermatology assist tool, a class one CE-marked medical device that uses machine learning to help find answers to common derm conditions, right from your smartphone or computer. 
From your phone, just upload three different photos taken from various angles of the skin, hair, or nail issue that you want to learn about and answer some basic questions about your symptoms. The AI model handles the rest. In a matter of seconds, you will have a list of possible matching dermatologic conditions, and then we can help you get relevant information to learn more. It seems simple, but developing an effective AI model for dermatology requires the capability to interpret millions and millions of images, inclusive of a full range of skin types and tones. When available, this tool will be accessible from your browser and cover 288 conditions, including 90% of the most commonly searched derm-related questions on Google. We're working to make it available to consumers on Google search in the EU as early as the end of this year. We've just looked at ways we're applying AI to support people and caregivers everywhere, but health isn't just driven by medical care. It's also about our social and emotional well-being, and that's where staying connected comes in. To find out how Google is helping, let me pass it back to Sundar. Thank you, Dr. DeSalvo. It's exciting to see the ways in which AI and image recognition are transforming healthcare. There are two additional areas of research where AI will have long-term impact. The first feels incredibly timely. We were all grateful to have video conferencing over the last year. It helped us stay in touch with family and friends and kept businesses and schools going. But there is no substitute for being together in the room with someone. So several years ago, we kicked off a project to use technology to explore what's possible. We call it Project Starline. It builds on the different areas of computer science I spoke about today and relies on custom-built hardware and highly specialized equipment. It's early and currently available in just a few of our offices, but we thought it'd be fun to give you a look at people experiencing it for the first time. Let's take a look. When I walked into the room, I was a little suspicious. What is this? I couldn't quite understand what was gonna happen when that screen lit up. Eddie! <laughs> <laughs> so, you look beautiful. I could feel her and see her, and it was this, like, 3D experience. I just saw my sister as if she was right in front of me. I really, really felt like she and I were in the same room. It was like she was here. Some key advances have made this experience possible. First, using high-resolution cameras and custom-built depth sensors, we capture your shape and appearance from multiple perspectives, and then fuse them together to create an extremely detailed, real-time 3D model. The resulting data is huge, many gigabits per second. To send this 3D imagery over existing networks, we developed novel compression and streaming algorithms that reduce the data by a factor of more than 100. And we have developed a breakthrough light field display that shows you the realistic representation of someone sitting right in front of you in three dimensions. As you move your head and body, our system adjusts the images to match your perspective. You can talk naturally, gesture, and make eye contact. It's as close as we can get to the feeling of sitting across from someone. As sophisticated as the technology is, it vanishes, so you can focus on what's most important. With Project Starline, we've brought together a set of advanced technologies with the goal of creating the best communications experience possible. We have spent thousands of hours testing it in our own offices, and the results are promising. There's also excitement from our lead enterprise partners. We plan to expand access to partners in healthcare and media. In pushing the boundaries of remote collaboration, we have made technical advances 
that will improve our entire suite of communications products. We look forward to sharing more ways for you to get involved in the months ahead. The second area of research I want to discuss is our work in driving forward sustainability. Sustainability has been a core value for more than 20 years. We were the first major company to become carbon neutral in 2007. We were also the first to match our operations with 100% renewable energy. That was in 2017, and we've been doing it ever since. And last year, we eliminated our entire carbon legacy. Our next ambition is our biggest yet. By 2030, we aim to operate on carbon-free energy 24-7. This means running every data center and office on clean electricity every hour of every day. Operating 24-7 on carbon-free energy is a step change from current approaches. It means setting a higher bar to never emit carbon from our operations in the first place. It's a moonshot, like Lambda or quantum computing. And it presents an equally hard set of problems to solve. First, we have to source carbon-free energy in every place we operate, a harder task in some places than in others. Today, five of our data centers are already operating at, at or near 90% carbon-free energy. In Denmark, we built five new solar farms to support our newest data center, complementing existing wind energy on the Danish grid. And it's operated carbon-free 90% of the time since day one. Another challenge of 24-7 carbon-free energy is just that. It has to run every hour of every day. So last year, we rolled out the world's first carbon-intelligent computing platform. It automatically shifts the timing of many compute tasks to when clean power sources are most plentiful. And today, I'm excited to announce we are the first company to implement carbon-intelligent load shifting across both time and place within our data center network. By this time next year, we'll be shifting more than a third of non-production compute to times and places with greater availability of carbon-free energy. To reach 24-7, we also need to go beyond wind and solar and tap into sources of on-demand clean energy like geothermal. Geothermal uses the consistent heat from the earth to generate electricity, but it's not widely used today and we want to change that. I'm excited to announce that we are partnering to develop a next generation geothermal power project. This will connect to the grid, serving our Nevada data centers starting next year. We believe our cloud AI, combined with the partner's expertise in fiber optic sensing and novel techniques can unlock flexible geothermal power in a broad range of new places. Investments like these are needed to get to 24-7 carbon-free energy. And it's happening right here in Mountain View, too. We are building our new campus to the highest sustainability standards. When completed, these buildings will feature a first-of-its-kind dragon-scale solar skin, equipped with 90,000 silver solar panels and the capacity to generate nearly 7 megawatts. They will house the largest geothermal pile system in North America, helping to heat the buildings in the winter and cool them in the summer. Sustainability is one of the defining challenges of our time, and advances in computer science and AI have a huge role to play in meeting it. So it's a fitting way to end our I.O. keynote. I think of I.O. not just as a celebration of technology, but of the people who use it, and build it, including the millions of developers watching today. Over the past year, we have seen how technology can be used to help billions of people through the most difficult of times. It's made us more committed than ever to our goal of building a more helpful Google for everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Please enjoy the rest of Google I.O. and stay tuned for the developer keynote coming up next. I hope to see you in person next year. Until then, Stay safe and be well.